talking about the laws from God. Does that make sense? And as a Muslim, we believe that God is all-knowing, almighty, all-powerful, and God is in a position to decide what's best for us. How do you feel about that? So the same way God has put restrictions on you, not being able to fulfill all of your desires, God has put the equal responsibility and restrictions on me. Now I'm unable to fulfill all my desires. So then you think that this is like a restriction. So you can't be, like for example me, I can't be like myself because I'm homosexual because God, it's like a restriction from God, right? Is that correct? The, the fact of the matter is yes. Because now, um, in the grand scheme of things, there's other restrictions which I have my weakness I may not be able to fulfill. So I may, I may fall into sin. Yeah, and I apologize if I offend you, but okay. I can't I can't say something isn't sinful if God has legislated to be sinful. Yeah, am, am I offending you? No, it's fine. Yeah. Well, uh, it's just I just asked you that because then like there's no point we keep like discussing. If you believe something and I believe another thing, you know. So I'm but, gonna respect your belief, and then I have like mine. Because for example. You're gonna tell me everything about God and everything, and I believe that. But then uh, it's gonna stop where I start. Like for example, because I'm something that you're gonna think that it's like against God, for example. You know? Am I? Now let me ask you a question. <laughs> okay. Can you be homosexual and still be a Muslim? Well, I don't know. I, I know that I can be homosexual and I can still believe in God, I can feel love, I can still do good, good things and everything. Okay. Now, many people may not know this, right? It's possible to be a homosexual and still be a Muslim. Probably not. Doesn't make sense. Muslim means, no, no, you can be. So, can be. Muslim means someone who submits to God. Yeah. Now, with the condition or the understanding that, look, there's a, um, I'm acting upon a sin. The same way there might be someone who may be doing, having sexual intercourse outside of marriage. So they wouldn't be accept. Huh? They wouldn't be accept, right? They wouldn't be what, sorry? Accept by the society, for example. If you're homosexual and Muslim, you, you wouldn't be accept. Like I, I, I outcast it. Yeah, like no one's gonna accept you uh, like you are, the way you are. Yeah. The same way um, Islam will, similarly to the way that Islam will look at someone who's married and having relationships outside of marriage. It's, it's a sinful, it's sinful. Does it make sense? So, but the fact of the matter is, someone could be sinful and still worship God. Still, like, there's been many case studies, right? Where there was this lady, she, thought, uh, she was lesbian. Uh, she was actually engaging in her behavior, in her, in her kind of passions. Uh, she was living with her partner, but she always had this inclination towards God. Does that make sense? And then by the end of it, she was able to kind of... Uh, like she read the Quran, she became Muslim, she, she went into a heterosexual relationship. Uh, so the thing is, it's like, who's to say, who's to draw which line and say that, oh, this is how I am, I'm not going to change. There's many things like, there are people who, as you may have heard, like became Muslim and they were not on a, born in a non-Muslim family. So there's a lot of changes they had to personally make. Yeah? But fundamentally, and this is where I'm going to the core, that God is the objective decider of what's good and bad. Because even yourself, you, you acknowledge that um, you can't decide what good is. Because your idea of good, my idea of good, someone else's idea of good, would change. Yeah? So I'm to, saying to yourself that through that knowledge, why don't we follow and act upon the revelation that came from God? So rather than God mentioning, oh, um, how does God feel about me acting upon this sin? Why don't we first actually establish that God exists, does Allah exist? Should I believe in Allah? If Allah is worth believing in, then Allah is worth obeying. Then we can look into the rules. But your, your, your first thing is, I know, look, before we say the belief and me embracing and believing in God, like, is God going to accept my behavior? I'm like, do you first accept Allah? Do you accept God first before we talk about behavior? I do, but 
then uh, I think that love, that God loves people the way they are. So it's like I, I don't, I didn't choose to be like this. I'm just, I am like this. Like I love someone that is the same sex as me. So I think God is gonna love you the same way. So that's why. Why? Where does that belief well, come from? Why? Why? No, 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 it's not, I'm, not, I'm not saying God wouldn't, but who said God is love? Does that make sense? Your belief, no, no, but where is your belief coming from? Because before we started recording, um, you made all these statements and you're like, but then you couldn't back it up. With me, I'm saying my belief comes from um, God Almighty, who revealed the scripture through his angel Gabriel to the final messenger, the prophet Muhammad. Uh, when you study the Prophet Muhammad, you see that fundamentally you're not going to have any issues with his lifestyle, um, the rules and regulations he came with, and just it was a perfect example. And then the scripture, the Quran, has been perfectly preserved. The message is perfect, and there's no mistakes, there's no crookedness in it. So I'm like, when I make a statement about God, I'm backing up based on this. When you make a statement about God, where is it coming from? Well, from the universe. So how is the long, universe? My heart. <laughs> but how, okay. But, this is, I mean, but do, 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 I, I really do, do you understand go. the premise yeah, of where yeah, I'm coming I, from? I, I really need to go, but I I respect your beliefs. Yeah. Okay. It's just that I believe in something. But that, that's my point. So you're, you're entitled. You can believe whatever you want to believe, right? But where is that belief coming from? Yeah. And sometimes we need to look into. Uh, look, there is because going back to the beginning of our conversation it's like there's a creator why would god create you and not communicate to you Does it make sense so i'm saying god has communicated to us through a perfect scripture so would you be interested in reading this book of course yeah so i'm going to gift it to you i'm going to give it to you a nice bag um and then i would suggest that don't procrastinate make effort because what happens is you're going to get busy with your life yeah. So try try to read a few parts of it. And do you have any other questions? Because the thing is, I don't want you to leave this conversation from thinking that God hates you or dislikes you. Does that make sense? I don't think that. Yeah? No, because at the end of the day, as human beings, as people, creation of God, we're on a journey. Yeah. Okay. And at the moment, you, you, you haven't connected with the scripture. You don't know God, you don't know Allah. So then why would you want to obey? Why would you like want to kind of follow the rules? Who is Allah? So I'm saying, look, before we go into you having to change your behavior, uh, let's first um, kind of feed and kind of nurture the belief. Yeah? So I'm going to give you the Quran and I'm here every Saturday. If you've got any follow up questions, I'll help you well with it. Yeah? Thank you so much. And you're in a rush, so I'm just going to hand it to you now. And then I don't know what I'm doing with the camera.